This video is sponsored by Normandy1998, Ash and Christopher Mitchell. Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing something a little different. As for those who don't know, a while back I tried my hand at a crossover short between Sonic and Pokemon. While at first it was only meant to be a one-off, due to getting such a positive reaction, and the fact that I believe Sonic X Pokemon is actually a really interesting story concept with a lot of potential, I decided to expand this out into a full-blown mini-series, which I'm now bringing together into one place for ease of viewing. However, I couldn't have done all this on my own, and so I want to give a special shout out to my friend Plus, whose voice you'll be hearing later on, and who helped come up with many of the pairings and thumbnails. He has awesome Sonic and Pokemon content on his channel, which I'll link in the description, so check that out if you haven't already. And while you're down there, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment if you'd like to see more like this. But with that said, let's get into the compilation. If Ash started with Sonic, he would find himself training a partner much like himself, being excitable, quick to action, and possessing a deep-seated loyalty to his friends. This would likely make their early bonding far easier, not to mention the fact that Sonic can talk, though unlike Meowth or Detective Pikachu, I don't believe he'd be able to speak to other Pokemon, as strictly speaking, he is not a Pokemon himself, despite being classed as one. As for his typing, he would most likely be classed as a normal type, due to just being a hedgehog, though there is a chance he'd be normal electric, due to the electric typing's association with speed. Speed, while his moveset would be Extreme Speed, Rollout, Defense Curl, and Sonic Boom. Together, Ash and Sonic would have many adventures throughout Kanto and beyond, while also striking up rivalries with Gary Oak and his starter Knuckles, as well as Alan and his partner Shadow. If Gary started with Knuckles, they would likely get off to a good start, having plenty in common from their cool personas, upbringing in a small somewhat isolated community, and the fact that they come from an important family and clan respectively. Though, Gary might have to leave his cheerleaders behind, since Knuckles' awkwardness around girls would likely cause him to struggle in battle if a whole cheering section was chanting his name. While at first Knuckles would enjoy travelling with Gary and being a rival to Sonic, his sense of duty as guardian of the Master Emerald would likely pull him homewards, and knowing to be the cause of his partner's heartache, Gary would go with him to Angel Island, eschewing the life of a battler in favour of his true passion with that being research. As a trusted friend, Knuckles would allow Gary to study the Master Emerald, with him learning secrets no other human knows, though from time to time, the duo would head back into the world, either to help save it from danger, or just to have some fun with their old pal Sonic and Ashy Boy. If Brock start with Mighty, they would be a natural pair as they are both determined and hard working while also being used to taking on a big brotherly role, with Brock having his little siblings, while Mighty has Ray, the latter of whom probably also hangs around the gym and plays with the kids. Due to his platy skull, Mighty would certainly be classed as a rock type, making him a fitting ace for Brock's gym team, with Rockhead being an obvious ability. As for his moves, Mighty would likely have Rollout, Defense Curl, Quick Attack and Bounce. Additionally, due to his love of travel, Mighty would certainly accompany Brock on his journeys with Ash, though from time to time he'd want to return home to check on Ray and the kids. Kids. Furthermore, as a pacifist by nature, he would be very supportive of Brock's desire to be a breeder rather than a battler, and would likewise assist his friend in any way he can when he departs the travelling lifestyle to begin his studies as a Pokemon doctor. If Misty trained Kitsunami the Fennec, they would be an effective team despite their personalities being like oil and water. That is because Kid has been programmed to a compulsive level to be a support, with it standing to reason that Misty would fill Surge's role in his life, with him doing everything in his power to assist and please her. Though Misty would be grateful to have such a loyal friend, she would also encourage Kid to assert his independence, believing that to be the best way she can help him, with it being a slow process, and likely the central focus of his character arc, starting all the way back in Kanto, and likely not being resolved until the World Cup arc, where he finally comes into his own. In terms of moves, Kid Tsunami would likely have Hydro Pump, Wave Crash, Helping Hand and Ice Beam, with his ability being Torrent to represent his willingness to put himself in danger to help the one he's supporting. If Surge trained, well, Surge, they would be an interesting pair to say the least. Hot-headed, aggressive and prone to using electricity as a weapon, they would seemingly be a perfect duo. However, there would be a darker side to their partnership, as Surge the Tenrec would likely be a Team Rocket experiment given to the Lieutenant as part of his role as a member of the Team Rocket Command Triad, with instructions being to hone her into a tool of world domination. While at first the human Surge would have no issue with that, acting as a drill sergeant and using her to trance challenges along with several other badniks Giovanni had sent him, they would eventually develop a bond of squad mates, and upon learning of her origin and purpose, Surge the Tenrec would quickly seek not only to rebel against her creators, but also to liberate her trainer, who in her eyes is just another weapon of a mastermind who cares nothing for either of them. In terms of of typing, Surge would be classed as Electric Steel, while her moves would be Thunder, Close Combat, Sonic Boom, and of course Plasma Fists. If Erica trained Cosmo, they would be a good pairing due to both being nature-themed and rather refined and demure in their disposition. Due to Erica's gym being in essentially a giant greenhouse, Cosmo would feel quite at home here. With a trainer as compassionate as Erica, she might be able to finally work through some of the trauma that fueled her more self-sacrificial traits, which in Sonic X often bordered on self-destructive. The only downside of this partnership is how often Cosmo would get mistaken for a curlier. When discussing typing, I believe Cosmo would be Grass Fairy, with the grass aspect being obvious, while the fairy typing is a reference to her 
alien nature like with Clefairy, which also ties back to her cute design aesthetic. If Sabrina had partners from the Pokemon franchise, I believe she would have two. First, there is the obvious one, the psychic type Silver, whose telekinetic abilities make him a perfect partner for the psychically adept Sabrina. However, the second is none other than Mephilus the Dark, who as his name would suggest would be a pure dark type, and would be born this time not from the mind of Solaris, but instead as a result of Sabrina's own mental issues. This would serve as a contrast to the anime whereas the innocent part of Sabrina was partitioned, with it this time being the sinister Mephilus, who acts independent of his trainer, playing on Sabrina Sabrina's fears and insecurities to ensure she obeys him rather than the other way around, as he works towards his sinister agenda, whatever that may be. If Koga had a sonic partner, his would be Espio Man, the roboticized version of Espio seen briefly in the Archie comics. Like with Surge the Tenric, he would be provided to Koga as a weapon for use as a member of the Team Rocket Command Triad, with the Shinobi putting him to good use both in gym battles, where his camouflage would confound challenges, but also in ninja missions, as the robotic chameleon has all the ninja skill of his template. In terms of typing, Espio Man would be Poison Steel, with the moves Camouflage, Barb Barrage, Water Shuriken, and Iron Tail. However, unlike Surge, this pairing would not be a long lasting one, as following an encounter with the young trainer in possession of the other members of Team Chaotix, Espio would be freed and would join his friends instead, much to the ninja gym leader's disgrace. If Blaine trained members of the Sonic franchise, his team would be among the most expansive, as first and foremost, he would have a number of reprogrammed and reformed badniks from his time in Team Rocket, such as Gamma, Omega, and Defect, all of whom would be happy to assist their trainer in more noble pursuits, such as gym battles, engineering, and thinking of extra tricky riddles. Each of them would be classed as Steel Fire, due to their being machines with a lot of firepower. Though they would not be Blaine's only friends, as hidden in the depths of the volcano, Blaine would have another guest. The fire psychic type Blaze the Cat, who would use the inhospitable nature of the Cinnabar Island volcano to hide the Sol Emeralds, and keep them safe from the very people Blaine used to work for, a duty the old man is eager to assist in, as it is his way of making amends for all his past misdeeds. If Giovanni and Metal Sonic teamed up, it would more than likely be as a result of the duel seeing in one another a truly fitting partner, as Giovanni has a history of seeing the bigger picture and scope of things past his own ego and bravado for Team Rocket, unlike the Doctor, with his desire for an empire. While Metal both has betrayed Eggman before when feeling his leadership is suboptimal, and would recognize the subtle genius and greater depth of Giovanni's subtle drive to rule the world, versus the Doctor's petulant and obvious ones. As an electric steel type, the fastest machine in existence, and the Doctor's ultimate creation, Metal would also seek to reign supreme over Pokemon, Mobian, and the Doctor's other badniks. And so after being cast aside and thought obsolete, Metal with some of his predecessor models in Silver and Mecha Sonic join up to form the boss's guard. And so the Eggman would quickly find himself completely under the heel of Giovanni and Metal Sonic, with the once loyal android all too happy to drive his creator out for his new master, as they make a bit to claim the Chaos Emeralds and then capture everything of value this world has to offer, be it one of Sonic's friends or even the rarest legendary Pokemon. And we all know how well it turns out when Giovanni takes a hand in raising what he views as a tool with limitless potential. If Meowth joined Fang the Hunter, aka the Sniper, aka Knack the Weasel's gang of hooligans, it would likely be as a result of his path pinning his heartbreak in the West, changing drastically, with him quickly running into Fang, Bark, and Bean after his harsh training to walk and talk in the wake of Meowth's rejection. Because of Fang's overconfident but still loyal to his own nature, I believe he'd want Meowth on the team, but also, he would be very interested in taking a job from the Eggman Rocket Alliance, with full intentions of double-crossing both dangerous organization for the biggest score possible, with Bean's wackiness and Bark's stoicism don't exactly even the sniping weasel out. Meaning, as a true brainiac, Meowth could pretty perfectly round out the team into a fairly unstoppable force, one which takes care of and covers his own, as evidenced by Meowth likely getting in great shape to keep up with the game, so that even the likes of Ash, Sonic, and Tails have to be wary of the group's schemes, and with true friends like these backing each other, it's more than possible these once thought stray losers could actually take over the world and run it in style. If Jesse and James is a part of Team Rocket, therefore joining the alliance with the Eggman and Empire, they'd certainly need some fitting partners. But I believe we'd still very much see them go through a slightly worse phase as bumbling idiots, since with Meowth independent with the hooligans, he's not around to balance out their trio, and so it'll take even more hard work to whip them into shape. As such, I think they'll rotate those partners like they do in canon as they track the likes of Ash Ketchum and Sonic in order to capture the blue blur. Their first partners, of course, the dual steel type Badnik Scratch and Grounder. And upon their more advanced adventures, we'd see the two forcefully swat by Eggman and Giovanni for the pure steel pair of Deco and Boko, and then later the Doctor's assistants Orbot and Q. Bot. However, their ultimate pairing would certainly be the Dark and Poison type Skunk Brothers Rough and Domble, as by this point, the two 
would have reached their true super spy phase. And with their expertise, they could actually be just the right coaches and partners to turn these rookie would-be villains into true evildoers, capable of making even Sonic and Ash prepare for trouble and make it double, especially when they bring all eight forces together. If Richie trained Team Chaotix, they would make for a fun group, as each member of the team fills a role from Richie's cannon team, with Charmy being the flying bug to match Happy, Espio being the lightning fast attacker like Sparky, and Vector being the reptilian muscle the same as Zippo. As a result, it is easy to say that Richie could make use of all three to complete his gym challenge, and to be a good rival to Ash and Sonic in the league, for it would surely be a memorable battle. In terms of typing, Espio would be pure poison due to his status as a chameleon and ninja training, while Charmy would be bug flying as a bee who, well, flies. The most contentious of the group would be Vector, as there are many ways you could type him, such as water or fighting, due to him being a crocodile and the power member of his team, though ultimately, I would class him as dragon normal, due to his primary method of attack being sound, which are mostly normal type moves, and dragon because the typing extends to anything vaguely draconic, which a crocodile is. If Paul had tails, he would not be the boy's starter, as from canon we know that Torterra is the one Pokemon he always treats with respect. Instead, Paul would find tails while he is being bullied for having, well, two tails, and recognize the unique trait as something of value, with him therefore catching the fox. Unfortunately, tails would never live up to Paul's hopes, as despite his genius and flying ability, he would have limited skill in combat, something not even Paul's more brutal training methods could bring out in him, thus making the fox effectively useless to the purple-haired youth. As a result, it would only be a matter of time before Paul abandoned him, though thankfully he would find a new home with Ash and Sonic, with the former helping him achieve his full potential through kindness and support, while the latter becomes the best friend and brother he always wanted. If Serena starred with Amy Rose, it would make for a good pairing, as initially they are both on a quest to find the object of their affection. Additionally, they share a similar outgoing and supportive personality, with a flair for the dramatic that would not only serve them well as companions to Ash and Sonic respectively, but also be invaluable in Pokemon showcases. Amy would also be good for Serena as a guiding star whenever her convictions begin to waver, as by watching the Pink Hedgehog's unerring determination to get what she wants, the Colossian girl might just find what it takes to get back on her feet, and even chase her own goals a bit more vigorously. In terms of typing, Amy would be a fairy type, with the moveset being play rough, brutal swing, quick attack, and naturally gigaton hammer. If Alan started with Shadow, it would be as a gift from Sycamore, having found him amnesiac and brought him back to the lab for care. Due to their similarly serious and goal-oriented personalities, they would be a natural pair, and so would set out into the world to find Shadow's lost memories. During this time, they would come across Lysander like in canon, with the man task them with recovering the Chaos Emeralds, with the promise that when all seven are assembled, Shadow's memories will return. Little would Alan or Shadow know that it was in fact Lysander who had created the artificial hedgehog using some of Evaltol's DNA as a power source for the ultimate weapon, with the plan being to use him for that purpose once he was at full strength thanks to the Chaos Emeralds. Fortunately, Alan and Shadow would come into contact with Ash and Sonic, forming respective rivalries that would lead them to the Colors League Finals, though this would all be forgotten in the face of Lysander's coup, with a pair of hedgehogs coming together and entering their super states, thus allowing them to defeat the false Zygarde and save the world. And that's where we'll leave this story. If you'd like to see more like it, let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out on an upload.